Welcome to the cloud economics session. In this session, I will explain what are the benefits of moving to the cloud in terms of the total cost of ownership. First of all, let's discuss what is the digital transformation happening today and how is it impacting your business. If you think of the S&P index today, the average age of the companies are almost dropped to 12 years. So when you compare it with 1960s, which was like 60 years of an age, it is very short. Again, I mean, the disruption is happening across the board and it will impact your business. That's why I think cost saving becomes one of the high priority topics for everyone in the organization. And again, one of the biggest topics that you can bring on the table when you have a board discussion is saving cost moving to the cloud. And again, the game starts with Microsoft Azure. Let me give you another important part as well about this cost uh, part of the discussion. By 2025, almost 60% of all the compute will happen on a public cloud. This is an important statement because 60% on the cloud, but 40% remains on premise. And Microsoft is the only vendor that provides a hybrid cloud solution. So you can keep your important data or critical uh, applications on your premises because we know that you want it on your local premise. Uh, and 60% of the data will be on the cloud where we have the platform for you, Microsoft Azure. And again, let's deep dive in a couple of different scenarios. So which scenarios we start with the cloud transition? First of all, again, I'm meeting with a lot of customers every day. And the first journey starts with infrastructure as a service. On the infrastructure, we have all the virtual machines. Again, think of your organization 10 years back when we had the discussion about virtualization, some of the IT managers were against virtualization. They were saying like, I have a server, I bought it for a single purpose and I will use and I will continue to use that. And some of the industry experts were saying like virtualization is a trend, it will boom, it will take only X percent of the uh, amount of the compute power. But look at now, like almost every single server has a lot of virtualized uh, operating systems running on it. So it's doing a multi-purpose operation because of the cost saving. You buy a hardware, you want to do a lot of things on a single uh, source. Same thing with the cloud. So on Microsoft Azure, let me tell you like what we provide to our customers. We have, as of today, when we recorded this video, there is 42 regions worldwide, including the, the announcement that we did for South Africa, Cape Town and Johannesburg. Uh, these are big investments from our end. Again, I mean, just to give you some numbers, in each region, we have roughly about like 600,000 servers. Uh, imagine like a data center with two football size stadiums. It's a massive, massive investment. And again, we build it that platform to serve to our customers. Again, the purpose is you don't need to buy any hardware anymore. You can put all your virtual machines, which are already virtual and sitting in your premise, to Azure as a starting point where we have your infrastructure as a service on Azure. And this is the basic scenario that we see. You can start with testing and developing. And again, this scenario is the most, one of the common scenarios to start with. So you have, let's say, an exchange server you are running as a backup. So you want to have a system that backs you up when the other system goes offline. The easiest way is putting another server next to each other. But if something happens in the premise, it's not safe or it's not a, uh, let's say, a perfect scenario for a disaster recovery. So the easiest way to try is like, you put one of your uh, backups, disaster recovery scenarios on the cloud. And Azure is built for that. Again, I mean, I will explain the platform as a service options on Azure. But starting with the basics, infrastructure services, which represents almost 60 or 70% of all the consumption happening today on the cloud world, this is the uh, space that you can invest your uh, time and effort on. And again, when you move the first things, you will experience a lot. First of all, you don't need to buy any hardware anymore. And it's just about hardware. You need to think of a lot of things. First, electricity. The price is going up, the timings are different. In order to cool that data centers, you are most likely spending a lot of money on AC, on the maintenance of AC. 
And again, I mean, I will deep dive into the basics, but you are spending a lot to manage your environment, including your security, facilities, and everything. When you move to cloud, these lines all go somewhere because like, you don't need to manage a hardware or manage a physical facility. Everything is virtual on the cloud. Again, I mean, Microsoft is investing heavily on your uh, premise security on the cloud, uh, on like providing the best capacity. Uh, and the beauty is, if your business is growing, let's say you are a startup, you started small, like you are getting a lot of hits to your website or you are getting a lot of interactions with your customers, you need a bigger capacity. On an on-premise world, you need to upgrade your server. On a cloud world, you just click a button, it grows. And again, you pay as you go, as an option. So if you are growing on the consumption, you will pay more because you are getting more. So it's the economies of scale. So you, you can have a bigger scale of investment like we did on our data centers. And you can benefit out of this big investment. So it will decrease your initial cost. You don't need to own a big data center to start a big business. You can start small. And then when your business picks up, again, the cloud will help you to grow. So this is an amazing cost-saving opportunity for you. So from the start, you just with the, start with the basics, and when you grow, the cloud will grow with you. And again, let's maybe come to the second point, where the platform services comes into play. There are a lot of services like databases that you don't need to run your instance alone. Think of SQL Server. You can have your SQL Server on an infrastructure machine, or you use a platform service, where we call it platform as a service. So imagine you are using a shared instance of SQL Server. So you don't own the SQL Server as standalone. You shared all the platform with the others. The beauty of it is you don't manage the platform, uh, the infrastructure that runs that. So Microsoft manages it for you. You just create a SQL Server database. And again, this is an amazing cost saving because you are not securing or you are not doing anything to specifically to manage that. And again, it's scalable. So when your data grows, everything grows it, uh, with it. So again, this is a scalability and cost-wise, it's a much way cheaper uh, uh, thing that you can achieve with a platform service. And on top of it, the third layer is, of course, the software as a service. And again, we provide that. If you look at our Office 365 offering, uh, if you look at a lot of services like we are using today, uh, as a software as a service, like Dynamics 365. These are running on top of Azure as a software as a service solution. So from ES, PaaS to SaaS, there are different options for you to save money to bring some cost options. And again, I will deep dive into specific scenarios uh, and I will give real life examples from our region. We are working with a lot of Ministry of Education uh, customers like this ministers has managing a lot of universities, a lot of K-12 education uh, institutions, and they all have a uh, boosting time in their uh, compute usage. Because imagine like May and June time frame, there are a lot of exams happening all around the world at the same time. So you need a bigger capacity of servers to do a lot of things at the same time. But in July and August, let's say, the capacity will drop because the schools are closed. You don't need that capacity. And that's where the cloud brings in the picture. Again, we have a uh, public case study on our website. You will see it. Uh, in Ministry of Education, we have seen like high burst on the consumption because they announced the university examination results. So imagine five million people are hitting that website. So you need to have a scalable platform. And during that time, even for one day, you can spin up your virtual machines to a bigger machine. So you spend more technically, but you will shut down the server to a smaller machine in the next day, so you will pay less. So all in all, 365 days of time, maybe you will do just two days of high bursting and then slow on the consumption. So this is an amazing opportunity when you think of using on the cloud. And one other example, again, the case study is available on our website, is a game development. So you can think like you just launched a game on iOS. Uh, again, I mean, it's booming up in different parts of the world. So this is a real example. So if you have a lot of customers playing your game in China, so you need a capacity in China. Technically, if you host your data uh, on an on-premise in the country that you 
build the application. It's really hard to give a perfect quality and uh, good smooth experience for the customers in China. But with Azure, you can bring that. We have 42 data centers uh, worldwide. And again, it's just spinning up a virtual machine in that data center. Again, when your business grows, you will continue to grow on the cloud. And again, that's the beauty of the cloud game. And again, uh, we can increase a lot of experiences, but I want you to try first. Go to TCO Calculator. Again, shown on the uh, video, you will see the URL. Microsoft TCO Calculator gives you the ability to define your needs. First of all, you can start with the basics. You can go to TCO Calculator site. You can add a simple virtual machine. What was the cost on your premise? And what will be the cost on Azure? You can compare these two, and you will see that there is a minimum almost 40 to 60% saving on a simple virtual machine. Again, if you think like I'm in different part of the world, like I'm in Turkey, I'm in Saudi, I'm in South Africa, the uh, labor cost will be different, the electricity will be different. That's why on the TCO calculator, you will be able to change every single ingredient. You can change the labor cost, you can change the bills, you can change a lot of hardware costs, upfront costs, and you can change even the management cost of the hardware. And it gives you a detailed report in every single line item. The beauty of this is you can show it to the management easily. It's a Microsoft proven site. Again, you, there are a lot of TCO sites, but this give, gives you the ability to compare service by service. I will have, let's say, S1, a standard server on Azure, versus an on-premise server on my site. What will be the cost saving for my company? We will give you a projection for one year and three years, so you can show that on the long term, you will be saving even more uh, on the cloud economics. And again, this is a different game. I will go back to the first part, digital transformation. The world is changing. Let's give the example Uber. I love that example because like the taxi industry uh, has really disrupted today. And I travel a lot. I use Uber, Karim, and different services all around the world. But if you look at those services, 10 years ago, they weren't even invented. So with the digital disruption happening on the mobile phones, internet connectivity, all the industry shifted. So if you are agile, you will catch up the train and you will be very like, agile to develop something which works locally. Or you will lose your business. And again, in the cloud world, agility is very important. So moving the services to cloud brings you to think more about your strategic moves on the business. You are not stuck with, like, I need to manage my data, I need to secure my platform. Again, you will find one of the interesting case studies, again, from Middle East uh, region, we have a great government case study. The government website was trying to be hacked by the hackers, like, all the time. Uh, they do different attacks. And again, the beauty of Azure platform is, when you put a website, even just a single website, and if you implement the security essentials. Again, there are a lot of services that you can buy on uh, top of it. Again, we provide a lot of uh, partners who are providing security solutions on cloud. On your local services, again, you need to contact with them, make an instance of the uh, service. But on the cloud, it's like an app store for you. We call it the Azure Marketplace. And on Azure Marketplace, we have almost 10,000 ISV solutions, which will secure your website, protect your data, or do any performance improvements. And this is a real example, like a government is now protect their website, was getting hacked every half an hour almost. Now, for the last two years, they never got hacked because the site is running on Azure, protected by a lot of ISV solutions. And at the end, it's a public site. So you need to make sure that everybody is available to reach the content of this government site. So in summary, like the cloud uh, economics provides you great benefits in terms of the cost savings. But it's not only that. It provides the agility. It provides the new things to do. So the last part that I want to cover is the innovation part. Because with the innovation, you will bring even more to your existing business. Let's think about the different things that you can bring with AI, artificial intelligence. A couple of years back, it was just an imagination. We couldn't even think about what an artificial intelligence can bring to our own business. Today, we have chatbots. 
you can implement a chatbot in five minutes on Azure. So you have a real data connecting to your uh, servers and bringing some meaningful information. And again, it's not by chance that we provide this by cloud. Because with cloud, imagine we have 600,000 servers in a single location. So they are learning. They are learning faster than any other machine. So every single learning is a good knowledge base. And we call this is the deep learning. So the system gets this learning. The good thing is we share that knowledge with all of our customers. You will see, for example, we provide cognitive services with any video footage as a service on Azure. You can get if the person is happy, sad, where the photo is taken, where the video is taken, and you can put even translations on demand. So this video can be in Chinese in a couple of seconds uh, because like I'm presenting it in English and Azure provides a lot of platform services as a cognitive service uh, that you can enable on the services. So this may disrupt all the things that you do and you will be fast paced on the competition game. So again, back to cloud economics. As a business decision maker, you need to think twice about buying a new device because you are investing to an old world. We know that that's an important thing. We know that by 2025, 40% of the data will be sitting on premise. But the first thing that you need to think is, did I do the right data classification? Should I put all my data on premise? Or is there any data points that I can move my data to the cloud? One last example I will give. Again, uh, I'm giving the examples from a really highly regulated industries, like an armed force. So a couple of armed forces in our region are using Azure. How? Because they need to run ISV solutions. And they need to be giving access to ISVs to interact with the solutions. And they cannot give an access to an ISV to their living environment. It's an armed forces uh, data center. So that's why they're investing on cloud. So this cloud sits on Microsoft and their on-premise sits on their on-premise. So they are not talking to each other. This is another scenario. And everything shouldn't need to be an, in a hybrid model which is synced together. You can separately have two different platforms and that's another beauty of the cloud. So whatever happens on the cloud stays on the cloud. So you have all the applications, all the ISV solutions, all your test environment there. You uh, technically bulletproof all the solution, you make it work, and you take all the solution back as a package to your own premise. This is possible, so it's the vice versa of the existing situation, but there are a lot of uh, scenarios like this. So again, data classification is a very important step. Finally, I again urge you to go to TCO calculator website to check your own TCO. What will be the benefit in dollars in your local currency, uh, what will be the impact that you can show to your business? And again, first you need to convince yourself and then your management and you need to start to take the action. And again, we have a huge partner ecosystem where we have trained them. Uh, we have a huge Microsoft services delivery options that will help you to migrate your platform to the cloud. Thank you.